When you hear anything about Joseph Stalin, you rarely consider his accomplishments. After all, his reign resulted in the deaths of over 40 million people. However, it is worth mentioning that Stalin's history is diverse. You will find a lot of bad things, but Stalin also did some good things for the Soviet Union. Watch the video till the end as we tell you the details about the good things Stalin did in his life. But before we do, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of the amazing content we have in store for you. The Beginning Joseph Vissarionovich Stalin was born on December 18, 1878 in Gori, Georgia, which was then part of the Russian Empire. Stalin grew up in a poor family. His mother was a laundress, while his father was a shoemaker and drinker who used to abuse his child. Early in his childhood, Stalin had smallpox, which left him with permanent facial scars. Stalin was a bright student and received a scholarship as a teenager to study for the priesthood in the Georgian Orthodox Church at a seminary in the nearby city of Tbilisi. While there, he began surreptitiously reading the work of German social philosopher and author of the Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx, and became interested in the Russian monarchy's revolutionary movement. Stalin became an underground political activist after leaving school, participating in labor protests and strikes. He changed his name to Koba, after a mythological Georgian outlaw hero, and joined the Bolsheviks, the more militant part of the Marxist Social Democratic Organization led by Vladimir Lenin. Stalin also got involved in a variety of criminal acts, including bank robberies, with the money going to the Bolshevik party. Between 1902 and 1913, he was arrested several times and sentenced to imprisonment and exile in Siberia. Rise to Power In 1912, while in exile in Switzerland, Lenin selected Joseph Stalin to lead the Bolshevik Party's first Central Committee. The Bolsheviks took control in Russia five years later, in November 1917. During this time, Stalin continued to rise through the Communist Party ranks, eventually becoming Secretary General of the Central Committee in 1922, a position that allowed him to select loyalists to government roles and build a political base. Stalin eventually outmaneuvered his competitors and won the power battle for control of the Communist Party when Lenin died in 1924. He became the Soviet Union's dictator in the late 1920s. Stalin's Reign Joseph Stalin began a series of five-year plans in the late 1920s with the goal of transforming the Soviet Union from a peasant country to an industrial giant. His economic development strategy focused on government control and included the forcible collectivization of Soviet agriculture, in which the government acquired control of farms. Millions of farmers were executed or banished as a result of refusing to obey Stalin's commands. The forced collectivization also resulted in a catastrophic famine that killed millions of people across the Soviet Union. Stalin declared that the Soviet Union needed to industrialize quickly as he was wary of Nazis pushing into the Soviet Red Army. Stalin had no private or family life, preferring to unwind with impromptu buffet suppers, to which he would invite high-ranking party leaders, generals, visiting foreign potentates, and others. The dictator drank little himself while encouraging others to overindulge, exposing weak points that he could later exploit. He would often tease his guests with balancing jocularity and venom in his demeanor. Industrial Progress The most notable of Stalin's achievements was the industrialization of the country. He took sole power in 1928, and he had raised the Soviet Union's overall industrial output to the point where it was only surpassed by that of the United States by 1937, after less than a decade as a totalitarian dictator. The magnitude of this achievement is best understood in light of the fact that in 1913, Russia ranked fifth in overall industrial output, and that it then suffered far more devastation from World War I, civil war, famine and pestilence which was more than any of the world's other major industrial countries during the same period. Despite being even more horribly decimated during World War II, the Soviet Union was able to play a vital role in defeating Hitler under Stalin's leadership, keeping its position as the world's second most powerful industrial and military complex after the United States. By firing an atomic weapon in 1949, Stalinist Russia announced its entry as the world's second nuclear power. Though Stalin achieved a high level of industrial output, very little of it was ever made available to ordinary Soviet citizens in the form of consumer products or other necessities of life. The state took a significant amount of the national wealth to support military expenditures, the police, and further industrialization. T-34 Tank The Soviet Union was a pretty rural and generally uneducated peasant country when Stalin came to power. They had little to no concept of military power, 
On the other hand, Stalin converted Russia into a global superpower with nuclear and space capabilities. The T-34 tank is one of Stalin's most famous inventions. The legendary tanks were both inventive and simple enough for countries to mass-produce. Stalin constructed factories and other complicated mechanical factories to manufacture tank parts. The tank was first introduced by the Soviets in 1940, and it was used by the Red Army against Operation Barbarossa during World War II. The T-34 had several innovative design elements for its day, and it was capable of destroying German panzers. The tank was dubbed the finest in the world by German generals. The T-34 possessed a more powerful weapon, a faster peak speed, and better sloping armor than German tanks. Free housing and better life quality Stalin instituted a policy providing everyone with free housing. Every family got an apartment. When people began to leave Russia in 1990, they actually sold their free apartments from the Soviet era. Apartments in Moscow nowadays might cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, whereas people received them for free during Stalin's reign. As the economy improved, so did the quality of life. The majority of the population was uneducated, and healthcare was unavailable to them. The infant and maternal mortality rates were both high, and the living conditions were deplorable. With Stalin in power, the literacy rate had risen from 20% in 1913 to 89% in 1932. Stalin and the Bolsheviks put up remarkable educational plans. They created schools to make education more accessible to everyone. Stalin had a big wish to make schools more accessible to the general public in order to better his propaganda lessons. As a result, he established schools in practically every Russian settlement. In 1913, there were just 4,000 schools in the Soviet Union. By 1940, the Soviet Union had over 65,000 schools. Furthermore, the mortality rate declined from 29 per 1,000 in 1913 to 10 per 1,000 in 1950. That's nearly three times the amount. Between 1913 and 1950, the child mortality rate dropped from 268 per 1,000 to 81 per 1,000. Role in World War II Stalin was the most successful of the supreme leaders during World War II. Stalin attended high-level Allied meetings with Churchill and Roosevelt. In May 1941, Stalin realized the mounting threat of a German invasion on the Soviet Union, and on June 22, 1941, Hitler launched an aggressive attack on the Soviet Union. Stalin instantly named himself Supreme Commander-in-Chief and stayed in Moscow to plan a massive counter-offensive strike when the Germans threatened it in the winter of 1941. Under Stalin's supreme command, the Soviet army won the Battle of Stalingrad in the following winter and the Battle of Kursk in the summer of 1943 turning the tide of invasion against the fleeing Germans, who eventually capitulated in May of 1945. Stalin himself exercised tight personal control over the Soviet battlefronts, military reserves, and war economy as war leader. Safe and crime-free country Another facet of life's quality was improved safety under Stalin. By 1950, annual pure alcohol consumption had dropped to 1.9 liters per person. There was no drug use or problem. Stalin outlawed prostitution, and the country's crime rate was extremely low. He took a hard stance against crime. Career criminals were sentenced to lengthy prison terms. Sleeping on the street and homeless people were unheard of in Stalin's Soviet Russia. Agriculture Agriculture collectivization under Stalin produced no good economic benefits. Collectivization, when viewed as a means of exercising authority over the politically resistant peasantry, justified itself and continued to do so for decades, becoming one of the dictator's most permanent triumphs. Furthermore, Stalin's program of rigorous urbanization continued after his death in a country with a population that was still more rural than any other major industrial country. Agriculture and forestry employed 56% of the population in 1937, and by 1958, that share had plummeted to 42% owing largely to Stalin's policies. Administration Another of the dictator's accomplishments was the establishment of his intricately bureaucratized administrative machinery, which was based on the interconnection of the Communist Party, ministries, legislative bodies, trade unions, political police and armed forces. These authorities continued to furnish the basic management levers of Soviet society in the decades after the dictator's death, sometimes under the direction of individuals who rose to prominence during the years of Stalinist depression. However, in its most extreme form, total personal tyranny did not outlive Stalin. After years in which the Communist Party, along with all other Soviet institutions, had been subjected to a single man's whim, his death resulted in the rebirth of the Communist Party as the primary source of power. Despite their immense influence as party leaders, Stalin's successors became little more than dominant characters within the framework of a ruling oligarchy. 
they did not grow into potentates who were solely responsible to themselves, as Stalin was during his nearly unchallenged quarter-century dictatorship. Economic Improvement By creating the first of a series of five-year programs to modernize agriculture and build new industries from the ground up, Stalin transformed the Soviet economy. When Stalin came to power, he inherited a destitute and war-ravaged rural landscape. He transformed it into one of the most powerful industrial countries in the world in less than a decade. Before Stalin's death, the Soviet Union was developing three times faster economically than the United States. According to some estimates, if Stalin had remained in power, the Soviet Union's economy would have grown to double the size of the United States by 1970. This is evident from the fact that the Soviet Union's gold holdings were barely 300 tons in 1920 before Stalin became the leader of the country. However, the USSR had 2,050 tons of gold at the time Stalin died in 1953. Stalin may have had a larger impact on the lives of more people than any other historical figure. However, decades after his death, the assessment of his total accomplishment remains a contentious issue. There is no doubt that Stalin led the Soviet Union into an unusually rapid period of industrial and scientific development. But many people believe he was egoistic, and people were insects to him, and most of his great schemes were designed just to feed his ego. Stalin died of a stroke on March 5, 1953, at the age of 74, and his body was embalmed and kept in Lenin's tomb in Red Square, Moscow until 1961, when it was taken and buried near the Kremlin walls. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video, and if you did, show some love and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on our amazing and informative videos in the future.